In this problem, we're going to solve this differential equation. This is a linear differential equation with constant coefficients and is non-homogeneous because the right-hand side is not zero. So the solution to this differential equation is of the form y equals y sub c plus y sub p. So we'll start by finding y sub c, which is the associated homogeneous solution. It's also called the complementary function. So to do that, we basically pretend that our DE is equal to zero, and we write down the characteristic equation. So to write down the characteristic equation, you look at the order of the derivative. So here it's the second derivative. So here it's m squared, then minus the first derivative. So it's just m to the 1. And then this is the zeroth derivative, so m to the 0. So you just write down the number, and then you set this equal to 0. This should factor, I believe this is m minus 1 half squared. You can check, that should be okay. Uh, if you square the 1 half, you get 1 fourth. If you multiply these two, you get negative 1 half m, and then times 2, you get negative m, that's the middle term. Squaring the m gives you m squared, so life is good. This definitely does check. So m is equal to 1 half, and the multiplicity is 2. The multiplicity is the number that you see here. So because we have multiplicity 2, we have a repeated real root. So y sub c is going to be equal to c1 e to the mx, so 1 half x. But then it's repeated, so you have to put an x. So x e to the 1 half x. So this would be our complementary function or complementary solution, or I like to think of it as the homogeneous solution or the associated homogeneous solution. All right, so now we just have to find uh, yp. Uh, before we do, let me just take this and write it like this. I just feel like writing it as x over 2 might cause some confusion. It's really the same thing as what we have down here, 1 half x. All right, let's focus now on the form of yp. Let's see if we can find the actual form of yp. So the form of yp, it, it's a process. I like to do it in steps. So I like to make an initial guess, and then if necessary, a modified guess. So for the initial guess, I, I look only at the right-hand side of the differential equation, just at that piece. So based off of that piece, there's two separate guesses. The 7 is going to give you an A, and the exponential will give you a b times e to the 1 half x. So that is based solely on looking at the right-hand side of the DE. To get the modified guess, you look at your current initial guess, and you look at the terms of y sub c, and you ask the question, is there repetition between the terms of yp and the terms of yc? So let's answer that question now. So let's look at a first. Well, a is a constant term. There are no constant terms in the terms of yc, so there is no repetition with the a, so we keep the a. b e to the 1 half x is an e to the 1 half x term. Oh look, we have one here. So in theory, we have to eliminate the repetition and put an x. However, we also have one with an x here. So that means we have to go even one higher. We have to go to x squared. So this is plus b x squared e to the 1 half x. So basically, you have to multiply by x enough times in order to eliminate the repetition. So doing x one time would be no good because we still have this piece here. That's why we had to do x squared. If we had a third c here, like c3x squared e to the 1 half x, in that case, you would need an x cubed in your modified guess. But we don't, so we're good where we are. So that would be the form of yp. The next step is to take this, take the derivative of this twice, and plug it into the DE. This is where things are going to get completely uh, insane. So I'm going to scroll down because I need more room, I think. And I'm going to rewrite uh, our DE. 
So our DE is Y um, double prime minus Y prime plus one fourth Y. And that was equal to, I believe it was uh, seven plus E to the one half X. Okay, seven plus E to the one half X. Okay, and we're gonna plug in uh, YP into that. So now let's go ahead and carefully take the derivatives. So here we have YP, I'm gonna circle it in blue so we can identify it. Okay. And now we need the first derivative and the second derivative. Let's find the first derivative. So yp prime, so the derivative of a is 0, and then here we have to use the product rule. So the product rule, the way I do it, is if you have f times g, think of f as the first and g as the second. It's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So taking the derivative of bx squared, that's 2bx, that's the derivative of the first times the second. So e to the one half x plus the first bx squared times the derivative of the second. So when you take the derivative of e to the one half x, you're just going to get e to the one half x. But then you're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is one half. So I'm going to go ahead and put the e to the one half x here. And to save a step, I'm going to put the one half in the front. Okay, so there we are. Let's check that. The derivative of bx squared is 2bx, looks okay, times the second, looks good, plus the first, which is bx squared, times the derivative of the second, which is e to the 1 half x, which we have, times the derivative of the inside, which is 1 half, which we also have, we just put it out front. And now it's going to get even crazier, because now we have to find the derivative again, and we have to use the product rule two times. So yp double prime, so again, the derivative of the first here will be just 2b times the second plus the first, so 2bx times the derivative of the second, so e to the 1 half x times 1 half. This time I didn't put it at the front, I just left it at the end. Let's check that. The derivative of the first is 2b times the second plus the first, which is 2bx, times the derivative of the second, which is e to the 1 half x times 1 half, plus, and we do it again. Notice when we take the derivative of the first this time, the 2 and the 1 half cancel, so we just get bx. That's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first piece, which is 1 half bx squared times the derivative of the second piece, which is e to the 1 half x. And again, chain rule, derivative of the inside is 1 half. Wow. Let me just check that one more time. Derivative of the first is bx times the second plus the first. Yep, everything looks good. Okay, um, I think some of this can be simplified here. Let's just go ahead and, and do that, I think. We can do a little bit here. So this 2 and this 2 cancel. So we get bx e to the 1 half x. And then here we get bx e to the 1 half x. So this is going to be 2b e to the 1 half x. And then we have bx e to the 1 half x, bx e to the 1 half x. That's going to be 2bx e to the 1 half x. And the last piece here is 1 fourth uh, bx squared e to the 1 half x. All right. So now we're going to plug all of this into our DE. I'm going to switch colors here. I wish I could write smaller, but I don't think it's humanly possible. So plugging in the second derivative, we have 2b e to the 1 half x. Just trying to fit it all on the screen here. Uh, plus 2bx. That's a 2. It's a, it's a messed up 2. <laughs> 2bx e to the 1 half x plus one-fourth bx squared e to the one-half x. So all we've plugged in so far is the second derivative minus y prime. So I'm going to go ahead and totally distribute the negative sign just to save a step here. So minus 2bx e to the one-half x. The y prime is up here, by the way. Let me circle it so you see it. There it is. Uh, minus one-half b 
bx squared e to the 1 half x plus 1 fourth y. So here's y up here. So it'll be 1 fourth a. And then uh, 1 fourth bx squared e to the 1 half x. And this is equal to 7 plus e to the 1 half x. All right. Let's look at this and hope some stuff goes away. Um, let's see what we got. So we have the 2b e to the 1 half x. I, I don't think that's going to go away. I think it's just going to stay, so I'll write it again. So 2b e to the 1 half x. All right. We have this 2bx e to the 1 half x. Oh, look at that. These cancel. How good is that? And what else do we have? Uh, we have a 1 fourth bx squared and a 1 fourth bx squared. So here we have this and we have this. If you add those, 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is 1 half, right? But then here you're taking away the 1 half. So look at that. Miracles do happen. It completely goes away. So all of that goes away, right? You just circle it again so you see it. So 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is 1 half, and it cancels with this middle term. So we're just left with plus 1 fourth a. Wow, talk about cleaning up nicely. And this is equal to 7 plus e to the 1 half x. I did not think that this would happen. So this is really good. So now we can just use matching. If we look at the e to the 1 half x terms, on the left hand side we have 2b. On the right hand side the coefficient is 1, just looking at the coefficients. So that means b is equal to 1 half. Boom. Really, really powerful. And if we look at the constant terms, on the left hand side we have 1 fourth a. On the right hand side we have 7. So multiplying by 4, we have 4 times 7, which is 28. Boom. So now we can write down yp. Recall yp was a plus bx squared e to the 1 half x. That was yp. So now yp will be 28 plus 1 half x squared e to the 1 half x. So that is yp. What a ton of work justifying yp. The final answer is y equals yc plus yp. Let's go ahead and finish this problem. So it'd be y equals yc is over here. So it'll be c1 e to the 1 half x plus c2 x e to the 1 half x. And then yp is plus 28 plus 1 half x squared e to the 1 half x. And that would finally be the solution to this differential equation. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.